Hello! My name is C.S.E. Cooney. I am a writer. I'm the author of Bone Swans, which was published by a small press called Mythic Delirium, and which won the World Fantasy Award in 2016. I'm also a, an audiobook narrator, and I am the singer-songwriter Brimstone Rhine. Right now, I am sitting in my office, which is my bedroom, in Westerly, Rhode Island, across the street from a Victorian strolling park, which is pretty much the coolest place to be. And I just went for a bike ride, so I am way jazzed. I'm here to answer five questions with Narazu. It's very exciting. How did I get started as an artist? Well, mythically, my mother says that when I was very small, she went to take me to see a puppet show, and I pointed to the stage and I said, I want to go there. And my mother said, okay, well, after the show, I'll take you up there and you can stand on the stage. And I said, no, I want to live there. So I really like that, although I don't have any memory of it. Uh, I remember in third grade, I wrote a chapter book called The Halls of Difficulty based on an imaginary game my brother and I used to play on the playground, you know, where there's lava and big spiders you have to fight. So that definitely was that. Uh, fourth grade, I wrote a play using my dad's music to create a narrative and my fourth grader colleagues sort of helped me put it on in the classroom. I have a vague recollection of that. Fifth grade, first poetry was probably about the moon and springtime. Sixth grade, first novel based on making perambulations around the playground with a friend of mine and telling her stories. I think that novel was called My World, and I was probably some kind of princess with very long hair and very cool clothes. Uh, let's see, what are some of my biggest influences? I would say the number one biggest influence in my whole life is Gene Wolfe, who I met when I was a late teenager, and he just ta taught me everything. He taught me how to write a cover letter, how to submit, uh, even that I should be writing short stories, which never occurred to me, as I generally have written long, long, long forms since I was very small, um, and that how to build a byline and how to follow uh, what would at that time be the traditional trajectory for a writer. And he's just a magnificent writer and a magnificent man. And I owe everything to him. Uh, so let's see. Uh, right now, my biggest influences is, um, are the members of my writing group, which are uh, Ellen Kushner, Delia Sherman, Joel Durfner, Liz Duffy Adams, and Carlos Hernandez. They're all writers. Uh, some of them write memoirs, some of them write plays, they all write fantasy, some of them write more historical, some of them write science fiction, but, but they're the nearest to my work right now, and they see it in its early stages, and they exert the most influence over what it turns into. Star Wars or Star Trek, and why? They say there's no right answer, but I'm afraid that if I say what I mean, there is a right answer and there's a wrong answer, but I have to admit, I'm totally a Trekkie, because I really love an ensemble piece with a vast cast of characters. I like an episodic journey, but I also like the long arc within that. And I like staying power. Um, Star Wars, I was very fond of for a very long time. I still have feelings for it, but I don't have nostalgia for it. I feel like it's the hero's journey and that I'm just not as interested in a traditional hero's journey, um, going into the anti-hero, exploring why Darth Vader is who he is. It's just a lot of dudes, generally, with a very few very interesting, fabulous women, but it's not a story I need to hear again and again and again. Uh, Star Trek, I think, can do some more exploring with itself. I think it's constantly reinventing itself. The danger lies in the reinventing the nostalgic part of it in general, but I am a Trekkie, I admit it. What am I currently working on? I am currently revising an old novella, part of my Dark Breakers series, which is sort of a uh, alternate history, Newport, Rhode Island, but it's not this world at all. It's something called Seafall. It's about the equivalent of our early 20th century, late 19th century, so we would call it the Gilded Age, and I'm calling it the Orchid Age. But, you know, it's not quite our world, so there's goblins and gentry and humans all coexisting in like a three world structure and they come into conflict and it's very exciting especially when there's things like labor rights and uh, women's votes to be contended with and the railway etc so that's very exciting I'm also I just started a, a new novel with a very old idea or rather old old characters and a very new idea and it feels lovely it's like 
nothing has remained the same. Barely the names have, and sometimes not even them. But this love I have for these characters, this old feeling of comfort and familiarity, I feel like I'm taking that and I'm setting it down in a new playground. And that's very exciting. Well, thank you for listening, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.